All right, this is a complete teardown and rebuild of an LQ4 LS engine going into a Humvee. The engine came out of a 2003 Yukon Denali and uh, we'll be going back in this 2001 Humvee. So at the end, you'll find my budget for everything that I put into this engine and the uh, books and the tips that I found along the way. It's a pretty easy project. I mean, there's a lot of information out there on YouTube and in books. And if you're slightly mechanically inclined and you got some time, I think just about anybody can do it. The book I used almost exclusively was How to Build and Modify GM LS Engines, and it's available on Google Play. It's got great torque tables and also has the torque specs right there along the way as you follow along in the steps. It's not like some annoying cookbook where it says, pour in the flour, and you're like, well, how much damn flour, and you have to go back to the beginning. It's much more complete, and it has everything right where you need it, so you can follow along right as you do the build. I bought the engine off eBay for about 1100 bucks from Fodor Auto Parts in Ohio, and it had 300,000 miles on it, quite a bit of usage, but it was all there, had the computers and all the accessories, so a really good place to start. It just needed to be taken apart and put back together from the beginning. It was about 500 bucks for YRC to haul it across the country and drop in my driveway, so it was a great start. I expected a big fight in removing the harmonic balancer, but I ended up trying first to use my impact wrench, which plugs in. I always buy the plug-in tools, and that way they don't go obsolete with the batteries, and they don't run out of ammo. Once you get the bolt out, you'll need the small harmonic balancer puller tool that you can rent from O'Reilly's, and it comes right off. Probably only took me about five minutes. It was nice and easy. But when you take everything apart, label everything, put it in bags, and put it on labeled pieces of cardboard, that way when you take it to the machine shop and when you come back and put it back together in a couple months, you'll remember what everything was. Originally, I thought I'd take the heads and the block to the pros to chemical tank, and then after a while, um, talking with Simmons Balancing in Charleston, they advised me what was worth doing and what was overkill for my project, and everything I brought to them was far and above my expectations. They did a great job. The things I didn't bring to them, I had to clean at home with brake cleaner, which wasn't as fun. Um, so they did a light hone of the cylinders, they decked the blocks, the block and the heads, they also put the cam bearings in, and polished my crank. They also cut val new valve seats and did a head job to make everything ready to go. Everything came out clean and ready to use. And then when I got it home, I wasn't ready to build yet, so I used a critter sprayer to uh, just kind of coat everything lightly with WD-40 and uh, keep the air off of it while it was in the bag and waiting to be used. I used an air compressor to clean out the coolant galleries or whatever you call them, um, the space where the coolant goes, and it blew a bunch of sediment around, plus I got a little bit of sand from my tow rope hoisting system so I just went back and carefully with a rag cleaned everything out and uh, re-wiped with WD-40, made sure to get it just perfect. And you can kind of see some of the sediment in here before I cleaned it up. Now that everything was cleaned up, I was pretty much ready to build and this is where the first new parts start going back into the engine. I watched a lot of videos on how to install the crankshaft and the main bearings and properly torque down the main caps. So that's where I started at this point and I used Royal Purple Assembly Lube to put everything together, which was really nice and a good viscosity so it would stay on the part and not make a mess all over the place. So now it was time to put the crankshaft in and uh, got the main bearings in and rested the crankshaft on there. And you can see the plastic gauge piece, it's basically just a, a very thin piece of wax that you put in all of your gaps and it doesn't really measure the gap so much as it just verifies the gap that is already there between the parts. So what you do is you put it in place and then you put, in this case, the main cap down and you crank down your torque sequence and then you remove all that and you can then measure this uh, plastic gauge against their, uh, their gauge that they give you on the, the product and that verifies what gap exists for you. What happened for me was that I kept coming out with too small of a gap which uh, was concerning me so I talked to the machine shop and they said that when you follow this torque sequence what can happen is the main caps can kind of bow in the center since they get torqued first and then become perfectly round again as you uh, crank the outside bolts and everything is torqued up evenly so um, the ultimate test was to verify that there was still a, a pretty much measurable good gap there and also that the crankshaft turned under hand pressure there's no binding everything just felt really good so um, once I did that I think it took me about three tries to be comfortable with it but once I did that I was ready to go and uh, move ahead from there
And you can see here what I'm actually doing is taking the bolts out and this is one of the times that I took the engine back apart in order to check the plastic gauge and make sure I had the right gaps before moving ahead. The torque sequence for all these bolts basically starts from the inside in the middle of the engine and works its way out. So um, there's, there's several steps as you go up and those are listed in the uh, Rebuilding LS Engines book that was referenced earlier in the video. Once all the bolts are out, you can remove the main caps again, um, which they come out uh, with a little bit of struggle. They're pretty tight, um, so I was using gloves, and when they give away, they fully come out. So just be ready for that. And uh, I actually did, I think on one of the end, end caps, uh, use a pry bar or something, just a little bit, a little bit of pressure in the gap to, to help it move. So they're in there pretty good, but uh, just be patient and pull hard. And these are the close-ups of the plastic gauge measurement and you can see where the thread or the wax thread has been crushed down and then you compare that against the gauge that they give you on the package. Nice and easy. I spent a lot of time along the way taking careful measurements and to be honest the parts were really good just straight out of the box and I think I probably could have just opened the boxes and put everything together in the engine, not measured anything and I think it would work just fine. I uh, didn't have to file the, the piston rings, all the bearings fit perfectly, everything just dropped in and it was great. So uh, I don't recommend doing it that way, but you know, if you're in a pinch or something, I suppose you could. So this is the main caps going back in for one final time and you can see they're numbered one, two, three, four, and then five, its number is on the opposite side, so it's the oddball. But just make sure you get those in the right place and you've got the front pointing forwards and whatnot, and they just go in uh, just like you'd think. When you finally install everything, make sure to use hand tools and not power tools when you're threading these things in. You hate to get something cross-threaded and then have a problem in your engine block that you've got to go back and fix. So uh, just use hand tools, and then I went to my torque wrench and started setting the torque in sequence. Um, the whole thing begins in the middle and works its way out. So the uh, center journal and then the one next to it, the one on the opposite side, and so forth until you get to the final ones at either end of the engine block. The torque specs are all listed in that book I'm using, Rebuilding LS Engines. Highly recommend it. It's got a great chart that's got everything on it, but then it also has the torque specs listed step by step as you go through the book, which is really nice because you can look at the step and the numbers are right there. So again, highly recommend that book, and as you go, you can consult back uh, right before every step make sure you have the right numbers and that you're doing the process the correct way. Make sure once you've got the uh, caps all torqued final that you spin the crankshaft a couple times and make sure it doesn't require a tool or any kind of significant torque to turn it over. It should be nice and smooth. And mine was, so I was ready to move on. So now I was ready to put the piston rings on the pistons and put them into the block. And I ordered the kit from Summit, which came out just perfectly. They have a, a variety of options, but if you take a micrometer and you measure your cylinder diameter, um, they'll get you the correct one. It's very, very precise, and these needed no filing, no adjustment, and all the gaps hit just perfect. So really nice parts and saved me a ton of time and tooling, uh, figuring out how to grind or cut those shorter. There's also a tool used for leveling the rings inside the cylinder so that they're completely straight, but I just used a roll of pipe tape because it was plastic and wouldn't scratch. It even has a nice lip on the edge so you can get the same depth all the way around and go pretty quickly. Um, so you'll see all the rings in one set at a time. There's, uh, I think it was, I can't remember if it was two or three total that you do this. I can't remember if you use the oil ring and do it this way. but. Uh, Anyway, so once you seat them in, you'll measure that gap using your feeler gauge. And if one seems a little tighter than the other or whatever, you can mix and match and get them in the right place. But once you decide what cylinder they're going into, then organize them by cylinder and keep the stacks together so that you can just assemble them as soon as you're done measuring everything. Make sure also when you do your final assembly that you get the rings uh, upright the correct way. Basically there's a top and a bottom and there's a beveled edge on each of the rings. So there is a direction that they go. I think it shows you on the package. Next you put the rings on the pistons and you want to make sure that the gaps are spaced around the perimeter of the piston, that they're all not lined up in the same place. And once you've done that you can go ahead and hand press the piston bearings or I guess the, 
the lower bearings into the pistons. And those just go in by hand, put a little bit of Royal Purple assembly lube on them, and they just press in, and you can make sure they don't sit proud using your fingers. I bought the plastic alignment rods. I was expecting to use them for this process, but I actually bought the wrong ones. So I didn't have them available. And instead of waiting, I just decided I would be careful. So um, Summit was great. They took them right back and gave me a refund. It was something I really didn't need in the end. I was able to carefully line up the pistons as they go down into the cylinders and make sure that they didn't tag up the finished surface of the crankshaft. It's pretty easy and actually the tension of the piston rings really holds that piston in place until you're driving it. Use something soft, be careful, take your time here, and you definitely can lose the, the piston rings out of the ring compressor. Just start over and try again. Now that the pistons were all torqued and the rods torqued down and in the block, it was time to put the camshaft in so that I could put the lifters in. So you put the lifters in the lifter tray and drop them in the hole. I used a BTR, a Brian Tooley Racing Truck Cam, and uh, in order to have some leverage to maneuver the camshaft, I used a long piece of all thread that I could put down the center of the camshaft and then just lubed up the bearing surfaces, um, pretty much the whole camshaft, all the finished surfaces, and slid it in the block very carefully. Then it was ready to go. Then it was time to put the timing chain on and I took the top gear uh, from the camshaft and there's a dimple in it. That lines up with the top tooth of the crankshaft gear and so I uh, put those two together, got them identical with a micrometer and a laser level and basically your tolerance is about one tooth there to make sure that you're in the right place. So got those in just the right place and that should work just fine. Then it was time to do the heads. This is a valve spring compression tool, and you're going to hate it. It's a pain in the ass. But uh, if you can fight with it enough to keep it from sliding off while you compress those springs and put the keepers in, eventually you will succeed. You can rent this from O'Reilly's, so at least the price is right. I looked several places for a complete gasket set, and this is the one I settled with from Jegs. Um, it ended up really being a nice kit. It had everything I needed and all in one kit, which was nice. Next it was time to put the heads on and the bolt kit I bought from Summit had the wrong length bolts, about half of them were too short. So it turns out there are actually two different specs and you got to make sure you get the right ones. Good news is that O'Reilly's, or no I guess it was Advanced Auto this time, they carried these bolts in stock and had them so I was able to save the weekend and make progress on this. And what you do is you put them all in place, you line up the cylinder heads using these metal dowels which you can reuse from the old engine. They're nothing but a metal ring um, and they're not very precise. Um, I ended up not knowing I could pull them out of the old cylinder heads so I, I bought a couple and they were a few dollars. And you'll get all the bolts settled down and then torque in a sequence starting in the middle to a certain torque spec and then you'll see me marking the bolts so that I know which ones I've turned past and the final torque is an angle torque so make sure that you just turn, uh, basically I eyeballed it but it's a certain angle that you turn it towards and you'll want to account for any slop in the tool before you start counting your measurement. A quick side note is that you'll see me using an impact tool, but I'm not actually using that to put any pressure on these bolts. I'm actually putting everything in by hand and making sure the threads line up and then using the electric tool to move those bolts when they need to travel, but not actually using that to put any pressure on any of the equipment. Alright, next I'm installing the push rods and they just get a little dab of Royal Purple assembly lube and then they'll seat in place on the lifters. Straighten the hole, nice and easy. I went with this rocker kit from Summit Racing. They were the upgraded version. Not a roller rocker setup, but they have the uh, all the parts, all the movable bearings and such inside are captive. So, um, those came in a really nice package from Summit Racing. They were easy to install. I used Royal Purple to lubricate everything prior to install, made the bolts turn nice and easy, and all the parts are coated. Use hand tools to put in the fasteners so you don't break anything. Just take your time. Uh, they just go in one at a time, straight down the line. It's nice and easy. The other thing you'll realize here is that if I could just miracle all the tools and parts in my hands, this would go a lot quicker. 
One pro tip from all this is to keep all your parts in their packages until it's actually time to install them. There's a lot of little parts and a lot of sets of things where if you lose one little part, that can completely mess up where you can't finish installing your set of something and then you're at a complete standstill. This actually happened to me with the valve spring installs where I lost one of the keepers and a very small piece of metal the size of your pinky fingernail uh, stopped me from being able to make headway. Fortunately, Advance Auto had some. I was able to just go down the street and buy a few, but with other parts, you might not be so lucky. Once I got the entire valve train built, I was able to put the valve covers on and make sure everything stayed clean, set the motor upright, and it was time to install the oil pump. It looks like there's several ways to align your oil pump, but the one I found on YouTube that I liked the best was something that turns out I had tools in the shop for. So I took the three thinnest shims off of my feeler gauge and you can basically work them in place around the oil pump and uh, kind of slide them in. You'll see me working them in the gaps until the feeler gauges take up all of the space. And so then the gauges ensure that there's equal space or uh, at least a very similar gap all around the circumference of the oil pump and then once that happens you can secure the oil pump in place and where it sits it's going to have a good spacing all around so once you take out those feeler gauges then you're nicely aligned and you're ready to go. There's a couple things to note here one is if you're working over cardboard it makes it a lot easier to clean up your mess when you fill this thing up with oil and then you have to remove the cover and the oil goes everywhere. So wait until you're ready to put the cover on and then give it some oil and make sure not to forget to take out your feeler gauges. Because if you don't, this thing's not going to pump any oil, which is the whole purpose of putting this on in the first place. This is also another good time to point out that I wasn't assembling anything with the impact tools. Generally good practice not to assemble engines with impact tools, but uh, just using those to help move bolts when they needed to travel and there was no impedance and no torque required to get them to move into position. After I torqued down the oil pump, I went back with a feeler gauge and went all around the circumference and made sure that I didn't have any corners of the circle. I mean, technically there's no corners, but you get the idea. But I was just making sure that there's nothing going to cause jamming and making sure I had it properly centered even after all the fasteners were finely positioned. Once that was done, I was able to put the cover on and move on to the next step. Once all that was completed, I was able to keep the motor upright and then roll it back over getting the windage tray mounted and getting prepared for the oil pan. The front timing cover uh, put in the seal with RTV and you've got to press that in. I used my handy press tool, this dead blow hammer and a wood block. This is the gasket set for the valley cover. Um, you can see it's pretty nice and also the intake gasket. Um, both really nice kits from that uh, complete set I was able to buy from Summit, highly recommended. Then the MSD wires go on, then the spark plugs, the exhaust manifolds, and the intake. That's pretty much it. It's all packaged up and ready to go in the truck when I get that far. As promised, here's a budget that I used on this engine and some links and parts so that you can build your own. That's it for the LS engine build. Like, subscribe if you want to be notified next time because then I've got to put this 6L90 into the Humvee and get the engine in and getting it all working together. So there's still plenty of work ahead. See you next time.